This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Let me get out of whatever I'm messing with here. And, oh, okay. And clear my screen. Today is one of those days where my fingers does not want to work on the screen. So, all right, today, thank you all for being here, and I appreciate it. Um, and Lee, for goodness sakes, <laughs> thank you. All right, so today we're talking about endless embroideries, and the um, handout is pretty much geared to the endless hoops, but there are other ways of doing it and using other hoops other than the endless hoop, but we'll go through the handout first and then we'll talk about the rest of it, okay? So let's get close enough to see the screen here. And if I plug my computer in, it gets brighter so I can see. There we go. All right. So we're going to go to our um, techniques and tutorials screen here. And I should have gone back to, we're gonna to go to the help center. And on the icon too, it's the little book at the top. And I forget what it is on the icon one, um, but we wanna to go to, and it's the home button and says open help center as it says in your handout you want to go to techniques and tutorials and then get into the embroidery techniques and we want to go almost all the way to the bottom and go to specialty hoop embroidery it is the bottom on the um, icon one. So we want to get into specialty hoop embroidery. And when we do that, then we have four choices here. We have the big creative grand dream hoop, which is our turnable hoop. We have the texture hoop, which I don't know of anybody who might have one. Do you have a texture hoop, Mary? I do. I have one. Do you, Lee? Have you used uh -huh. it much? That's the only one I have in that size. So yes, I use it just like a regular hoop. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, it's a 150 by 150 hoop. Right. So it is handy for that. Then we have endless hoop embroidery, which is what we're dealing with today. And there's another category and they have added in designs if you're doing an endless embroidery um, and the endless hoops are geared for stitching on an edge like a border on a quilt or a border on a towel or you know just something close to the edge of your project and that you keep repeating the design and they have put in our design collections endless designs and they've made special designs that coordinate with those endless designs that are made to fit in corners if you're doing like a border on a quilt or something and that's that's really nice to have um not to have to jury rig something to put in the corner and so but right now we're going to talk about our endless hoop embroidery so if you touch that it will so bring with our, up with our new 200 by 200 metal it's going to be great for that yes the new 200 by 200 metal is going to be great. I have a few comments about that in a minute. Okay, thanks, Lee. Um, so now we have our tutorial for it, and we also have the content. And there, if you touch content, there are many, many designs. There's 53 designs um, that are endless. And if you just select one of them, I'm gonna select number one here and close that. Then 
if I unselect it, then I can see the distinct parts of this design that will let you know that it is an endless design. And those parts are this line up at the top with little corners on it. And then there's another line at the bottom, which is just a mirror image of what's at top with the corners on it. Now there's several ways, not all designs have exactly the same kind of indication of being an endless design. Some of them just have little corners. They don't have the line that connects the corners. Um, let's see what we got here if we, come on. Uh, delete that one and go to my open book. I, it takes me back to the content and I can pick another design and close that. And this one, come on, unselect, thank you. This one has just the little corners that show you um, that it's an endless design. And on um, on this one, it's interesting, stop doing that, um, that the top corners are even with the top of the design, but the bottom corners are not all the way down to the bottom. And that would be interesting to see that stitch out because it looks to me, like you it would stitch that little round dot again is that how it looks to you mary it does but you know that's just an, those two two and three are just uh icon two designs oh okay so i'm, I'm sorry that's all right i will well, show them what they're missing <laughs> okay Sorry, I'm, I assumed, and I shouldn't, that because other things that we've looked at previously, um, the things, the designs and everything were the same for both machines. So let me find one that I know is on both machines. And that would be this one, because I've used this one. And this happens to be one that there are, um, oh, it doesn't like my hoop. Come on. Let me get me a bigger hoop. Like, well, 260. Come on. Well, you should have come in at the right size. You rascal. Put yourself in the hoop. There we go. All right, this one, unselect, please. It has a, a, again, it has a line across the top and the bottom. And I know that this particular design has um, a corner design that goes with it. In fact, it's, it's one that they show in the handout that has the corner designs. Um, when you're showing the top, we can't see it. You're up pretty close, so you have to scoop the top down. Thank you. It's yeah, still, thank you, Mary. We don't see the top even now. How about there? Now I do. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, it's hard for me to watch the screen, and, and I watch, the, I see what you're seeing in, in a small square on my laptop, but Sometimes it's, they're not right next to each other. So thank you. Good luck with that. That's, that's hard to see in those small squares. Yeah. So. Whoops, right there. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Please keep me <laughs> where I need to be. Okay. Thank you. Um, so there are, and the design that I sent you today if you printed it out, and what did I do with mine? Okay. I didn't get a print out, something to print out. I'm sorry. I did not get anything that I should print out. Well, 
did you did you get the handout and everything, Barb? No. Okay. Um, then when we get to the end of the meeting, give me your email address and I will add you to the list and I will okay. send you the stuff for today. Okay. Okay. I thought registering would take care of all that, but apparently it didn't. Well, it depends on when you registered. If it was recently, Carol may not have had the opportunity to give me your email address. Okay, no problem. I'll remind okay. you at the end. All right, thank you, Barb. All right, so this is the printout, and it's hard to see, but it shows a, just a red line at the top, and then it shows the two corners at the bottom. And that this is a design that is in the endless collection on your machine. And I shortened it in the software. And then in the software, there is a feature that will make a design endless. And you can tell it what kind of markings to add to the design to um, for the lining up. And that's what those, those marks are to line it up after you've stitched one copy of your design, like this one that I stitched out, okay, of the design that I sent you. And I've managed to, this, at the top, it just put two little stitches, but down at the bottom, it did do the corner designs. So I've taken it out of my original hoop, and I've put it in this magnetic hoop, so I can line, when I put the design back in the machine, I can line these two corners up with the two stitches at the very top so that the designs connect are, and are in line with each other for the repeat. Did that make sense, Dan? Okay. Thank you, Sandy, when you nod your head, I love it. <laughs> um, anyhow, um, so that endless designs are, are really handy. Um, for the longest time, all we had was the endless hoop or hoops. There are two endless hoops. One is um, like 130 by, uh, it's the size of our, uh, magnetic hoop, 180 by 130, and then there is the huge um, mega endless hoop, and it is 260 by 150. Okay, and let me open this up, and I'll just give you a, a brief review of what the endless hoops look like and how they operate. Okay, this is a completely different looking hoop. Um, it does not have the two pieces like a normal plastic hoop, nor is it metal with magnets like our, our metal hoops. It is a, you have a handle here that when you turn it to the right, it closes the hoop. But when you turn it to the left, there's two positions going either direction. And that opens it or gently drops it down. But it, what, what you do is this does not come off. You're going to take your fabric and you're going to slide it in. And there is a little ledge here on the right hand side for you to snug your fabric up to. And I probably should turn this paper the other way. And then when you get your fabric positioned in there, then you're going to turn it to the right until it clicks. And that clamps your fabric in the hoop. And there are markings uh, molded into the edge of the hoop that it will help you line up things. Then when you're, you've, stitched out your design, 
you just open the hoop up and you slide your fabric up and close it down again and make sure that you've lined your design up correctly and keep going and it the um, it's great for doing stuff on the edge and if you have something you're doing little on the edge then the, the littler hoop would be good but this big one was um probably made because people were saying that little one was too little it was it's much narrower and it's um not as long so if you have a big design like the design that is in our project for today it you would need this big hoop to um be able to stitch it out if you were using a endless hoop um are any questions about how it operates or anything about it okay so um i know i i have a hard time staying with the handout sometimes and today's one of those days um let me get this back where we look at the machine okay um so you've got a lot of choices if you want to do something as an endless design the endless hoops like i said are only useful if you're doing something on an edge because if you were wanting to do an endless design as to quilt which this design works really great for quilting. Uh, if you wanted to do that on an inside piece of a project, like a, you, you did an in, uh, you know, a, a border section on a quilt, but it was interior to it rather than on the edge, then I think you would probably want to use the magnetic hoops. And as Lee mentioned we have a brand new magnetic hoop, which brings our total of magnetic hoops to four. The new one is, which I just opened this morning of mine, is 200 by 200, and it comes with a template, which can be very handy for getting your designs in the, the right place to uh, position them. It's hard to, there we go. It's hard to um, sometimes get them lined up without a lot, lot of, without a lot of jockeying around, um, which I did, when I did my uh, stitch out for last night, for my sample of the design that I sent you. I did that in a, a 100 or a 120 by 120 hoop. And then this morning I'm trying to put it back in the 120 by 120 hoop to line it up. And I hooped it about four times. And then I said, I quit. And I went and got my magnetic hoop because it's so much easier to well, first off, I had a lot more room to maneuver. This design is pretty snug in the 120 by 120 hoop. But if I have it in a larger hoop that I can use my design positioning to move it up and down, it's going to make my life a lot easier. So I ha right now I have it in the 180 by 130, which is the same size as the small endless hoop. But with my design more to the center of this piece of fabric, I might not be able to um, actually use the endless hoop for it because I have too much fabric over on the right-hand side. Does that make sense? Okay, thank you. And the 
little folder that came with the 200 by 200 magnetic hoop on the back it has a little section about lining up an endless embroidery so i thought that was a great addition to the information for it it also talks about standard embroidery and lace and other things so that was that was great that they had included the endless embroidery instructions with that hoop how many of you have done any endless embroideries mary sandy and did you use the endless hoops or did you use something else i use the endless in fact today i'm going to use it i think i'm going to do those monkeys <laughs> okay that's what i'm thinking I think I've used both regular hoops and and endless. Yeah, I've used, I've only used it the endless, so I never thought about using it with the metal. I think that's a great idea. It mm -hmm. it is because it it opens up a whole lot of options as to what you can use an endless design on. Right. So, yeah i never thought about using a larger hoop for some dumb reason because i guess you know but i like that idea too yeah okay. using a magnetic or something but your fabric has to be wider though right you have to have it yeah hooped right yeah you have to be able to hoop your fabric right yeah where endless is kind of if i'm going to use like a a line of something or a border correct is that what kind of the idea is right okay but, but you could put your magnetic hoops um like i said this one is it's only 130 wide right oh yeah you're right you're right yeah that's the same size as the small endless mm -hmm. and then the yeah, next that, one yeah. up is 240 by 150 Oh, and what kind of stabilizer? Um, you can use various kinds of. Lee, do you have want to say? Something? I was just going. I was just going to say on the on the metal hoop, we could use the wash away Kimber Bell stabilizer, mm. and you could have it wherever you wanted it. Oh, right, yeah. and um, there is a, an Inspira makes a. Um, I don't want to say dedicated, but they make a, when the metal hoops came out, they came out with a new stabilizer called um, Light and Tacky, which is a tear away. It's sticky and you put it underneath the uh, metal hoop on the bottom side. The bottom side of the metal hoop is smooth pretty much the lights here it, it's it's shiny in fact and um the top side is blocked it's kind of fuzzy but the sticky stabilizer will stick to the back of the hoop and then you can put your project <clears throat> on the top of the hoop but if you're doing a quilt you know you don't really need additional stabilizer if you've already got your quilt sandwich you can just use your your magnets to hold it in place. So again, I I digress from the handout. Um, <clears throat> so if you go back to um, the content and look at all the various designs, there's some really pretty ones in there, and our handout reminds us that we can go to the MySonet library and there are additional, many additional um, endless designs in the library that we can use to, and they're not all um, just quilting or 
what I'm going to say, normal embroidery. There's lace designs and cut work designs, uh, all sorts of types of designs, and even the ones that are in our uh, machines, like this one. When I can get it to come up, come here. This is a cut work design that's also an endless design. So it's you're not just limited to quilting type designs or just normal thread embroidery designs. You can have uh, thread velvet designs. You can have lace designs. You can have cut work designs. So that are all endless. So it opens up a whole different world of um, designs. And in the software, there is a feature that if you are creating your own designs, you can turn them into an endless design. And it, you can tell it what kind of uh, markings you want it to add to the design for your alignment marks. And the one that I sent you today, I did in the software and put made it an endless design using the software. Okay. Also, when you are stitching something out um, as an endless design, um, as we all know that when you stitch something out, it can change the um, dimension of your fabric so that when you go to line up this, the second copy or additional copies of your embroidery, that when you line up, you use precise positioning to set your needle point for the repeat for that line that's at top you would use put line up your start point here and you line up the other end of your line this line might come out just to be a tad shorter than the um stitch points on your design for, because of actually have embroidered on the fabric and it draws the fabric in a bit. Does that make sense? And and we'll do that. We'll line it, <clears throat> line our second repeat of this design up here in a minute. So <clears throat> have, do you have any questions on anything that I've talked about so far? Okay, so let me bring in um, my second repeat of, that I want to stitch out of this design and get something that'll work here. And my design is in the cloud, so I'm going to the folder and open this design and it was designed for a 120 by 120 hoop, but now I have it in a 180 by 130 metal hoop. So I will change my hoop there. And it centered the design for me. So I'm going to go to stitch out and say, okay. And now <clears throat> put my hoop on. Okay, so now it it goes to my um, first mark up here. Let me get rid of these for now. Okay, you can see where my cursor is. It's at those um, that line that's above the top of the design. So what I want to make sure is that my needle 
on the machine, when I drop the needle, it's going to come to that bottom corner that was my first repeat. And I'm about a quarter of an inch to the right of that mark and maybe just a tad below it. So I'm going to go into precise positioning. And select operation number two, which will let me move my uh, hoop so I can line up my design. So I'm moving my hoop. And I can hand wheel my needle down. Let's see if I can get down closer so you can see. Okay. Okay, come on. And then when if I oh, I'm still a little below, so I need to and the arrows on my control wheel, <clears throat> excuse me. tell me which direction I'm moving my hoop, but boy. Come on, there we go. I still need to go to the left a little. No, not yet. And it's, you know, it seems a little painful sometimes to just be moving in such small increments. <clears throat> but <clears throat> that's a good thing too, because then you can be very precise about where <clears throat> you're putting things. So right now, if I drop my needle, it goes right into the hole that was made when that little corner was stitched out. <clears throat> so then I can come back to precise positioning and I can um, go back to the number one operation and move my cursor over to the end of the line here. And if I magnify it so that I can see it exactly, oh, you rascal, I can, and the red line is at the very top of my screen. And if I move it, I'm moving, try to move my screen down. I'm moving, um, well, here, let's do this. Um, come on. Now, I don't know how, how well you can see this, but in the middle of that cursor, there is an an empty spot and in that empty spot i can see the very end of my red line so i know that it is centered exactly on the end of my line that i want to use to position and if i touch my icon for operation number two or step number two then it will move my hoop over and when I drop my needle, it is <clears throat> very, very close to where the corner of that alignment mark is. All right. And if, if they are not exactly matched up, um, what I, I will either average it out like maybe it's one tick to the or two ticks to the right of the mark on the right so then maybe i and but it was right on on the left mark <clears throat> i may excuse me <clears throat> i may want to m move my design or my hoop just a tad to the left to compensate for that difference. <clears throat> and I also can now go back on 
precise positioning, I can go back to um, step one and move my cursor, say, to um, the bottom of my design. And no, I don't want to go. I don't want the bottom. I want the top. I'm sorry. If I move that, and I have ghost mode on, which is why the design looks very pale. If I were have remembered to turn ghost mode off, then the design would appear in full color. And it would be easier to see where things were. So now I have my <clears throat> cursor. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> like Mary, I don't talk much. <clears throat> okay. So my, my cursor is at the very top of my design, which I want to line up with the bottom of my previous one. <clears throat> so when I move, <clears throat> go to step two, and I check my needle position, then it is mm, maybe one or two clicks away from where I really want it. So <clears throat> that's just an, another check as to where I could position my design. Does that make sense the way I said it? Or is there any questions if you have them, Lee? I do. I do. The, the new machine has the camera on it. So why didn't you use the camera? You could use the camera. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. You could use the camera. How would it help in this situation? But um, the Icon Ones don't have a camera, so right. we need to be able to tell the Icon One people how to do it without the camera. Right, which we appreciate. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to see how the camera would help if we well, were using it now. My, my feeling is the camera would help get it really close, really close where you know sometimes when you're just moving your fabric around but then i would still with an endless i would still go to precise positioning to make sure it was in the exact needle down spot wouldn't you judy yes i would i you precise both. positioning is to me the ultimate positioning tool that we have and, you know, right now I haven't used the camera hardly at all, <clears throat> And but precise positioning has never failed me. Right. You know. Yeah, I agree. And I think that, but the camera would help me get it closer <clears throat> than sometimes I normally get things when I'm doing that. So I would get closer in the ballpark so I didn't have to move my design outside of my hoop, which I've had to do in the past. <laughs> thank you for the discussion. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank you for the question. I appreciate those. Um, anybody else have any questions? Barb, are you, is this making sense to you since this is your first time I'm with us? I'm following along just fine because I've done enough stuff on my other machines that I can follow it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I'm glad. All right. So if I'm ready to just stitch this out, then um, I can go ahead and say, okay, for precise positioning. And again, just for grins, I'm checking to make sure that it, my needle is going to drop where I want it to at the left end of that red line, which is right smack dab there. And then I can go ahead and <clears throat> I really don't need to stitch that line. I could just skip, it's a separate color. 
I could skip it and then just go straight to my design. Let's see if I do that. Let's see here. It's the red color, which you can't see because my camera's not in the right place. But if I touch color number two, then it's going to go directly to that part of the design for me. <clears throat> um, it's a personal choice. I trust it. So if if I wanted to just go ahead and, and stitch that one, or if I wanted to um, just for grins to stitch out this first color, I could do that. So if I stitch that, and then it's going to go that was that first color which was the line and it has let me pull this forward it ended up right on top of the line at the bottom of my previous stitch out so i'm happy and i can go ahead and stitch out my design So <clears throat> the design that I that what I've stitched out here is is the design that I've sent you and it takes about 15 minutes to stitch out if you want to uh, give that a go. I know you can't leave, but uh, other people if you want to go ahead and do that, um, feel free. And Barb, I'm sorry. Well, I'll tell you what, Barb. If you give me your email while other people are stitching out, I will run over to the computer and um, find a piece of paper that I can write on. I will send it to you so you can play along with us. Okay, tell me. It is Barbara. Uh -huh. Not dot crom c r o m uh -huh. at gmail.com okay all right give me a couple minutes and i will get it to you judy i think i'm gonna go thank you at least i got to see this part all right lee thank you for being in your your mobile office yeah, it worked pretty well, actually. I can't do anything, but I can watch. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, Bye. Bye, Lee. Bye. Thank you. Okay, it's on its way, Barb. It's there are three files. There are two PDFs, which are the handouts for the class. One is the class instructions, the second one is a class project. And there's a VP3 file, which is this design. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Please let me know if it doesn't show up. 
I will do that. <laughs> And maybe I'll let mine stitch out while well, others are stitching too. And I'll turn off my microphone so that I don't. I'm stopping to change thread because <clears throat> I'm running out of thread. So. Let's see. I'm not going to stitch out. I, I've been looking at the endless ones on the library and oh my goodness, there's so many cute designs there for bottom of towels or you know whatever they're uh -huh. really cute really cute i didn't hadn't spent a lot of time looking at them so it's it's i'm glad you did and now i will be anxious to go look and see what is there thank you mary mary is that the sonet library Yes, my Sonet library. They have the one that I really caught my eye. It's two pigs, and they say they're thread velvet pigs. So I'm I'm gonna have to try that one out. <laughs> <laughs> the thread velvet is neat. It is. I, I like to think of it as maybe the hearts or something you know it doesn't show where the thread velvet is and i think sometimes they mislabel some of these things but they've got thread velvet endless elephants so really dancing christmas ornaments oh they're, they're just adorable i'll have to check that out I thought I would have to try to put some at the bottom of, you know, like towels and give them out as gifts. Yeah. Well, that's, our project today is the a border for a towel. Right, I saw that. So you're right, right with it.
Did it come through, Barb? Yes, I got it, and I've got it printing out already. All right, fantastic. Thank you. Because obviously I couldn't be ready to sew today because I didn't know what was going on. So <laughs> well, I'm sorry that uh, we okay. didn't. Communication problems happen. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. But I'll get you. I'll add you to my list, and you'll get everything in the future. Thank you. And I'll also add you to the the monthly technique class, which is not machine specific. Okay. Okay. Although I do have the two, so anytime you have uh, pointers for two, I'll take them. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. And, and I same here. If you discover something, I'd be glad to know that. Yeah, I mean, I've had it a week and I've been playing, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, there's a, a lot more to learn than just a week. <laughs> so. Yes. It took me a day to learn how to sew again. <laughs> it is different but it's great so far so good This design that I sent you does, when it stitches the second color, which is what I'm stitching now, it does kind of thump a bit because it is stitching into that center part that it had stitched out first and it's a little thick. So there's nothing wrong. It's just because it's stitching into that thick part. All right. Makes sense.
Judy, I'm noticing a number nine at the top of the printout. Is the is this the ninth lesson or the ninth chapter? It's um it's the ninth chapter because some of the lessons were split into A and B. Okay, um, now if I can see all those videos on YouTube, is there any way I can get the handouts? Um, if you, yes, I can send them to you. I, they will be in bits and pieces because it's going to be, you know. Quite yeah, few. well, as, yeah. as you have time and get to them. Okay, I will make myself a note because otherwise right. it disappears out of my brain. Yeah, I know. And sometimes I write notes and they disappear under the piles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, I will get them to you. All right, thank you very much. You're most welcome.
Okay, it is it has finished the embroidery part and is now ready to stitch out my alignment stitches for my next repeat. So now if I wanted to continue in uh, my uh, multicolor design here, um, I could repeat what I did before by moving the embroidery up in the hoop and um, using precise position to get my top line stitches from the next repeat lined up with those corners that it just stitched out and it just keep going for as long as you want to and yes mary i <laughs> i brought the the sonet library up on my epic since i couldn't do it on my right i mean on my vibe when i couldn't do it on my thoth while it was stitching out there's cross stitch designs that are endless Yeah, there's a lot of quilting designs. There's wing needle designs, I've, yarn designs. There's everything. I'm up. I just um, search. Yeah, up. there's you gotta explore. Designs. I just searched on um, endless, and yes, some things came up like articles of clothing denim shorts and stuff which i don't believe are endless but um there's certainly plenty of things that really are endless in there let's see i'm a, i'm up to number like 420 or something and then still going yeah i think it lists a thousand eighty seven designs that they've classified there's one in there that I thought was cute. It was a clothesline with clothes hanging on it. And then I thought, well, would any of the kids even know what that is? <laughs> <laughs> and nobody puts clothes on a clothesline anymore, hardly, except Peggy. Well, I was say, a lot of communities you're not allowed to. No, I'm not allowed to, that's for sure. Yeah, me either. I grow tomato plants that Karen was going to give me. Oh, really? Yeah, if you and I would have to do it in a pot. And oh, yeah. yeah. Anything that's in a pot has to be a flower. So well, that's that that that's going to the extreme, don't you think? And they have their reasons, but I don't always agree with them. <laughs> you know how that is. Yeah, well, I don't grow tomatoes. I don't grow anything but flowers, but I wouldn't grow tomatoes because I got, keep getting those worms. And I don't like those worms. No, those are nasty. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hmm. Well, there, there's some really, really pretty designs in there, and some of them are the same. I've been cruising through. I, I'm seeing some of the ones that are in our machines. But um, oh really? I guess I hadn't. That that clothing design that I had pulled up on on the my machine the other one it was uh the flowers the two outline flowers and I said there was a corner one that matched it. Like, yeah. And cruising through here, I saw um that corner design. So I am guessing that the regular part of it is in here also yeah probably um maybe it's just the signature designs and the exclusives or something that they don't put out there maybe yeah but they're they're adding more and more and there's some some really cute um uh, endless designs like dancing clowns and princesses and there's a lot of christmas stuff right and tons of lace kind of designs 
Yeah. So you can you can could spend your life stitching out endless designs. Flowers, um, dancing well, you gingerbread. Could spend your life just looking at the designs. <laughs> Oh, look at Sandy. She did her monkeys. How cute. Oh. I have always thought that. Let me see. I got to see. Oh, that is adorable. That is really great, Sandy. <laughs> I'm going to do it again. Those were two design, two hoopings. And I'm going to do it again, but it was seven minutes. And I didn't want to take, you know, I didn't know what else you were going to say. So I'm going to put it back in and do uh, another one. Did you and see it, Barbara? When you get it all stitched out. Yes, I can see it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know what I might do. Maybe, uh, I don't know, a book bag for a grandchild or maybe just a board on a towel or a pillowcase. Oh, pillowcase is good. Cup yeah. on a pillowcase would be great with some of these designs. For yeah. monkeying around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> you know, in Florida. I think the heat's getting to you. <laughs> Lori, how are you doing okay? I am. I'm not sitting down. I'm just playing on my um, software. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Not all no, that's fine. Um, do you you have the MySonet software? Yes. No, I don't. I still have my old. Okay, but you, there still should be uh, a feature in there where you can make a design endless. Okay. Okay. I just, then that's why I'm just kind of playing, trying to figure it out. You know me. I don't understand. <laughs> oh, but I get I get because we took a class one other time. Remember what, where we did this long long time ago. Yeah, there's, they keep in the handout, they keep referring to something back in lesson five. And yeah. I did not take the time to go back and look at that. I need to. Very yeah. great. I, 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 okay. Thank you, Lori. Uh huh. Peg, are you there? Yes, finally. I had to. I don't know. My laptop was giving me trouble and I just switched computers. Okay. So did you miss stuff? Do I need to? No, not too much because I was following you on my laptop. I uh -huh. mean, you know, my desktop. And uh, I just ran in and tried to switch it and it finally switched over. Okay. I'm All just right. trying to, I am trying to catch up because I couldn't be on my machine. I'm doing it now going through the steps on my machine. Okay. Um, well, don't hesitate to ask questions. Oh, I won't. And Barb, do you have the software? No, I do not have a uh, FOF software. Okay, well, it's, do you have any kind of software? To create yes, I, I have Floriani software. Okay. I have no idea. I know that it's a, a full featured software and I don't have any idea and maybe you haven't checked into it to see if it has the capability of creating endless designs for you. I have never looked, but I will be now when we're done with <laughs> <expect> class. No. <laughs> As I said, just said to my husband, I've been playing with the idea of endless designs, but without any kind of instruction, I didn't know where to start. Okay, well, so you, may, you may have created a monster. Oh, uh, now wait, I, I had to have help. Yep, had to start somewhere. Right. Um, the My Sonet library, you can go into it and look at everything. Yeah, I, I may have to get a little bit of instruction on that because I go into my Sonet library on my machine and it I get nine pictures and that's it. I can't scroll either way. Well, um, try it on your computer because it's 
I mean, it's nice to be able to go into it on the machine. The pictures are little and um, it just, it's a little easier, I think, on an iPad. Mary, you're using an iPad to do some scrolling, right? Yeah, I use both. I use my computer and my iPad. The other thing about if you use your computer or your iPad, if if the design, when you click on the design, if it has special instructions or if there was a booklet that came out with it, it's in there. And you can't see those on the sewing machine. But I use the sewing machine if I'm gonna go in and get something quick, you know, while I'm there. Yeah, I think that's what they intended with it. And um, you can, there are some free designs on there. And then if um, if you have the MySoNet software, which is both FOF and Viking and both Windows and Mac, um, then you have access to, you can download anything in the SoNet library. It doesn't belong to you, but you can use it because it's a subscription kind of thing. Okay. Or if you do not have the MySoNet library, you can purchase the designs and they're very reasonably priced. And then once once you have it, it's yours. You can do anything you want with it. But if you're just, quote, borrowing it from the library, then it's like <laughs> like a library book. It doesn't belong to you. You can use it. You can read it. You can um, do whatever. But um, if your subscription goes away, then so does your design. Okay. So. You can also get the real basic, basic my net software just by having an account that's free you can't do a whole lot with it but you can download it and you know do a few things and ship it to your machine yeah it's you could go to the the fop or viking or the my sonet site and uh, get the the free what they call basic version right so you might check into that if you go to the MySoNet site, it will tell you the difference in the in the different versions of the software. Definitely worth checking out. Okay, thank you. So do you have any comments about, I haven't read a lot about the, the project, um, but is there anything on there that we need to know? Well, uh, she used a, um, design from the library, um, which is a, a, as I recall, that was a design that was made for a collection about towels. And she put it on a separate piece of fabric. And um, the only thing that kind of made me wonder about it was that, um, she used upholstery fabric and I putting it on a towel, I wasn't um, real sure that that would be real washable. You know, if, if you were gonna use that kind of fabric, uh, I would think that maybe you would wanna give it a run through the washing machine and dryer first and uh, make sure that it was not, that it would hold up and it didn't, you know, shrink inordinately or something um, for you. Um, and then um, I would have, if it were me putting something on a towel, I would be inclined to um, put it down at the, the very hem of the towel, you know, to attach it right above the hem or on the hem. Um, from reading this fairly quickly, it sounded as if that she overlapped the border onto the towel and, and was there was just um, 
a little bit of the border hanging down below the end of the towel. So, you know, it's a, it's a personal choice. And um, I, it did give her um, a way to, on the very last page where she talks about sewing the border onto the towel, <clears throat> she was able to turn the ends of the border under and stitch them down to the towel and um, that would have hidden the um, ends of the towel. Although I, did, I think she did surge the edges of, of the border before she put them on the towel. So it, it was not really raw edges that she was turning under and, and stitching down. Okay. I mean, it's a it's a pretty design, and um, as I recall, in the uh, collection of of designs that the, that was in, there were also little hangers that if you make, wanted to make like a, a kitchen towel that you could hang on a a cabinet knob or something that there were embroidered hangers with a, an embroidered loop that you could put on a, a, the end of a towel, a gathered towel, and use. So okay. and if, if you look at the name on the um, <clears throat> who wrote the project for us and who has been writing our projects, that's the lady who was here for our Icon 2 classes. I just noticed that, yeah. And it was it was interesting to be able to talk to somebody who who actually writes all these projects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sandy's oh. making more monkeys. Monkeying around again. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've done it three times. And uh, actually, uh, it didn't match exactly on, you know, where the precise positioning and so forth, but it didn't, it doesn't really matter on this one, uh, right. as long as it's close, because the monkeys are kind of grabbing the bananas, but it's not in their hands. And as long as it's kind of like on a line, it's, and it's really okay. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to do it one more time. Okay. How long <laughs> is that? Is well, I just had a, a nine inch piece of uh, fabric that I had used for something else. And so I just uh, fused some of the no-show mesh on a long thing. And uh, I'm not sure how long, I didn't measure how long it was. <laughs> okay. Is but that from my so net? That design is really, really cute. Uh, no, Barbara, that's on the machine. That was on the machine. Ah, I haven't Under even explored the, those. Under the endless, like what uh, Judy okay. was saying earlier, how you go on it, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you just go into the um, right techniques and tutorials, yeah. Okay. And then I, I will check it out. <laughs> it's number forty-two. Number forty-two on the designs. Okay. Sandy, do you have yours where you can show it again, or is it on your machine? Sure. Thank you. Sure. And that's just that design's just on the new machine, right? Uh, no, I I think it was on the Pro too, also. Oh my gosh, that, 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 that is so cute! Been around for a while. I've done I've done this one before, actually. I put it on the bottom of a bag or something. I forget year what I did a long time ago. That, that's really nice. Good job. Well, was, the machine is great. <laughs> that looks like a fun one to color. You know, you say oh, yes. That would, that would be <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do it on this fabric. I think it's too. It's kind of like a heavy um, muslin. It's not a muslin, but it's a heavier one. It wouldn't be too. Good. I think it would just go all over, the, all over the place. Do you think what? Well, I wonder. It depends on 
Um, Mary, it's what kind of media colors were you thinking of? I mean, like what media? Mm -hmm. Like the pencils and the aloe vera or? Oh, I think that would be, that's a that's, good idea. Thanks. I would, I would test it out on a, um, you know, I don't have a preference, so I would just test it out on a piece of scrap if you could cut off a little and then test yeah. your different mediums. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's a good idea. Have you done the pencils and the aloe vera, Sandy? No, but like everybody else, I have all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that's um, when you think of using like paints or something, you usually think concern is bleeding you know but that's what i figured if you, yeah. if you take the the pencils and just color in your area with the dry pencils and then okay. take aloe vera on a brush it will um i'm going to use the word muddle the colors and kind of even them out but it doesn't bleed you can go right up to the edge of your stitching and it does not bleed now, are you using watercolor ones? I because the watercolor pencils, or without yeah. watercolor? Okay. Oh, I'll try that, Judy. And uh, mm -hmm. then you want to heat set it. Okay, I'll try that. Hmm. Because we did with um, Karen Charles, we did some flowers that we stitched out. I watched that. Uh, she was on something. I forget. I yes, Judy. That's yes. Thank you. I will go back and watch that. Okay. <laughs> that is great idea, to, Mary. Thank you. She, I she have some great face back thing, uh, Facebook things on Foff and Viking. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, well, yeah. She did an online class for us. Oh. We did some uh, flowers. Give me a sec. I've given my grandsons pillowcases with fabric that they can color with uh, oh. water, water soluble pens so that when mom oh. washes it, it all goes away <laughs> and they can start over. <laughs> my little boys are uh, five and three. So yeah. this oh, is I one, of, one of the flowers I did. Oh my gosh. And I did five of them. Wow. Why don't you teach a class? I could. Yeah. It would it be hard to do it over the uh, internet like what we do like this. No, that's how Karen did it for us. Hmm. Something so I would enjoy yeah. that, Judy. That'd be fun. That's yeah. Good. yeah. These are those. Um, OK, what's the name of them? Derwent. It's an English. Product. Oh, oh. Hmm. yeah, I think that's what mine are is Derwent. Derwent. Yeah, yeah mine the Derwent. Too. Um, and they're not as Amazon handy. Amazon has them, you can get them at all sorts of places. Joanne's, yeah. I think, even has some of them. I got mine at, at Michael's. Yeah, they're not exactly inexpensive, but it still works great. But wait until August or September, because I may be having to, not having to, but I'm going to be seeing my mother who's 96. Wow. I'm going to be going to Ohio. And uh, so. Okay, well, I've, I've got plenty to do. In <laughs> hey, have a computer, you can see it anywhere. That's true, yes, yes. But she didn't have internet, so I'm going to experiment with a hotspot. <laughs> ah. oh, well, I've seen those work great. I hope. <laughs> hmm. oh. Well, good. Yes. Here comes Mary. She's got something to show us. Oh, no, no, no. The phone rang. I'm by myself. I got, oh. I got the windows cleaners coming in a bit, and I thought they were going to tell me they were here. <laughs> okay. Well, does anybody have any other questions, comments, something to show us that pertains to today? No. I don't think so. I need to go. Yeah. Thanks, Judy.
Thank you, thank Judy. It was you. really thank good. You. Thank you, oh, thank you. I may have, may have questions later, but. <laughs> bye, well, Barb. Bye. Bye, Gloria, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, Judy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.